<laughs> no, I'll tell you, if there's one thing I really want to bring back, though, if there was one way I was going to use my power, it would be to bring back the Castrati. That's all I know and that's all I feel. A <laughs> couple of Castrati fans in there. A couple of Castratis by the sound of those rules. <laughs> right? Who doesn't know about the Castrati? You don't know? I'm going to tell you about the Castrati. <laughs> in the 19th century and prior, what exclusively Italians would do would take a prepubescent boy who could sing beautifully and lop off his testicles. I've heard some people say they would crush the testicle, but I think they would take the testicle. And you'd think, oh, well, he becomes like a woman if you take the testicle. No! He becomes an enormous bird-like creature. <laughs> the castrati. Because the testosterone, even a woman's testosterone, fuses the joint. And so the, the arms stop growing at a certain point. The ribs stop growing. Not so with the castrati. They just become huge, weird, spindly, child, boy, enormous, bird-like people with huge lungs. But with the vocal cords of a child. So there's this huge thing coming out of this tiny... It's like when you put your thumb on a hose. You know? But in music. And I, we just don't know how it sounded. We've got one recording. We've got one recording and it's okay. But you miss what made the Castrati great. When this man would sing live, people would shout out from the audience, Long live the knife! So much did they love the sound he produced. So sad what we have today. You know, listening to music today, knowing what could be if they were Castrati. It'd be like going to Monaco and watching Daniel Ricciardo try and fang it around the track in a Suzuki Swift. <laughs> it's impressive, but why not go all the way? And don't you think the Castrati would love it? Don't you think they'd love it, ladies and gentlemen? I think they'd love it. Imagine if Aaron Carter could trade his testicles now for the career he should have had, crystallised in his prime. I think he'd give it up. Some people say Michael Jackson's father was too abusive. I disagree. <laughs> Michael Jackson's father was not nearly abusive. Enough, ladies and gentlemen. Of course, it was, it was illegal to cut your son's testicles off for the purpose of singing. There had to be a medical... Medical? <clears throat> there had, it was illegal! You see what I'll do here? It was, it was illegal to cut your son's testicles off for the purpose of singing. What they would have to do is he would have to have an accident and give consent. And, of course, there weren't any accidents, really, because it doesn't happen very often in the present day you see a Castrati accidentally walking around. But they would make them up. And because they were Italian, they would always make up the same one. A swan attacked my son's testicles. Something like 80% of the Castrati had these tales about, like, Oh, the terrible swan. Okay, the swoop in my testicle, and now I'm the best singer in Naples. <laughs> It just sort of goes to show you how different Italians are. <laughs> Some people think Japanese people are the most different. Not me. It's Italians. Because when the English in the 1800s set up an empire, they said, well, we're going over there. We're having a railway. We're taking all your stuff. We're taking over the world. At the same time, the Italians were saying, we have an empire. But I will take him a son testicle, <laughs> make him into a big bird man. <laughs> and also we're doing these things with the tomatoes. <laughs> we just got them from the new world. They, they do the other, Portugal, Spain, they do the rape and the kill. We make a sauce. <laughs> we're not inviting anybody. Halfway point, of course, would be the French. Between those two, who did have an empire and did invade. But you know, when they got there, they'd go, oh, bonjour Vietnam. We take everything, but while we are here, we like what you do with meat. Have you considered putting it in a sandwich? <laughs> you put a lot of butter on one side and the pate on the other. Call this a banh mi. You're welcome. <laughs> you want us to leave? Okay, off run, we will go. But the Americans will come and invade you soon. And they will not be as culinarily generous as we have been. <laughs> Bonjour, merci beaucoup. 
But the Italians, they were just working the testicles. <laughs> getting them done, getting them off, making some beautiful noises. I love it. You know, when I was a child and I heard about the castrati, I heard that and I thought, oh, that's, oh, that's wrong, isn't it? To castrate a child. It's not right. But now that I'm more woke and worldly and know about things, I'm more better educated, I see, of course, it's actually mandatory to cut off a child's testicles. And if you come out and you say, I think it's wrong to castrate a child, we'll take you off Facebook, we'll say you're doing hate speech. So before anyone goes, oh, James, I'm here, oh, I don't think we should castrate a child, I'm in favour! Let's castrate children! Of course! If that's what the Coca-Cola Corporation wants us to do <laughs> and think is a cool thing, I'm all for it. What I'm saying is when trans people do it, it's so selfish. <laughs> trans people cut off their testicles before puberty just to make themselves happy. And why do that? When you could cut the testicles off a child in a certain way without any supplementary hormones and make entire opera houses happy. <laughs> You could make all of continental Europe happy by offering up your testicles to that. <laughs>